One of the most important skills in forest management is having the ability to know when a tree is growing well and when it's growing poorly. We call this characteristic, generally speaking, identifying tree vigor. The reason why this skill is so important is because along with species and quality, it really is a characteristic that is the basis of a lot of silvicultural decision making on both a micro and macro level. And what I mean by that is it not only helps you determine when and how an overall stand is harvested, but it helps you make decisions as to which specific trees are going to stay and which are going to go. You see, trees are a lot like trains. They're inertial organisms. It takes a lot to get them to speed up, but also it takes a lot to get them to slow down. So if we imagine ourselves standing next to the railroad tracks and we only get one snapshot of data, and we know that at one single moment in time, a train is going, we'll say 20 miles an hour, we can be fairly certain that for the mile before and the mile after that specific moment, the train is going to continue to be going 20 miles an hour because it takes so much energy to get it to speed up and slow down. Trees are the exact same way. So if we know how to identify tree vigor and we know how well trees are growing in the present, it's a pretty good indication of future results. So speaking reductively about silviculture for a minute, if we go into the forest and find our fastest moving trains and then eliminate our slowest moving trains, the average speed of our trains increases tremendously. And that's why it's so important to be able to identify tree vigor and find those fast moving trains. There's only one problem. It's not exactly an objective metric. Well, it is. You can always cut down the tree and count the rings or use an increment bore, uh, but that's not exactly practical for a couple reasons. One, it can be damaging to the tree, and two, it takes a lot of time. Um, and so ideally, you wanna be able to go into the woods and immediately identify whether or not a tree is in a healthy or unhealthy state. That takes some skill, and it's a skill that comes with time and iterative observation, but I'm gonna make it easy for you. We're gonna look at some more or less subjective characteristics that you can look at in order to judge how a tree is growing. And once you kind of understand these things and you go out in the field and practice it, that skill will come a lot sooner than you think. So today we're gonna to be focusing on two parts of the tree in particular the crown and believe it or not, the bark. And we'll start with the crown and the most objective metric today, which would be the live crown ratio. The live crown ratio is the percent of the total height of the tree that carries live foliage bearing branches. Of course, the foliage is the photosynthetic material of the tree. It is the power source of the tree. So the higher the percent of the stem that carries live foliage, the more vigorous the tree will be growing. Now, of course, all trees growing in a forest are going to have some crown recession starting from the lower branches as the tree becomes shaded by surrounding competition. And that's fine, it's even desirable, especially when we're talking about growing quality hardwoods. We want that nice clean bowl as we've talked about in previous videos. But even for just run of the mill, um, literally dimensional lumber species like spruce or pine, we do wanna see some of that recession. Uh, if we have too many live branches, we get a lot of taper, we get a lot of knots, and it can actually have negative consequences, not just to the quality of the boards, but to the uh, productivity of harvest. So really, this is just a question of thresholds. How much crown recession is too much? And that's when we should be mindful that we are grading these trees on a curve. We can't be comparing trees of different species. We just have to be looking at the individual stems and grading them on a class of their own species, so to speak. So for example, a lot of intolerance like aspen, uh, they're going to naturally prune their branches pretty readily. Whereas there are some shade tolerant species like sugar maple that they should be able to hold on to their branches for longer. So while a 30% live crown ratio might be just great for a quaking aspen, for a sugar maple, it might indicate the individual is a bit weak. But then we also have to consider a tree's age. A crown isn't necessarily a scarce resource. A tree can increase its live crown ratio as it grows up in height. Uh, however, if the tree does not have much height growth left in it, it doesn't have much chance of restoring much of that ratio. And so we do have to be mindful about how much of that height growth a tree has left in it. If a tree is relatively young, if it's a thinning age tree, for example, then a 20% live crown ratio, while not ideal, and it still does represent a slower moving train, it can increase that velocity over time as it regains its uh, live crown ratio. But if a tree is already at a mature stage, all you can really do is prevent those crowns from receding further and keep that train at a constant velocity. But with all that in mind, I'd give the very general rule of thumb that any tree with a live crown ratio around 30% or more is considered vigorous. And that should only reach a maximum of about 50%. Any higher than that and you start to run into other issues.
but the ratio itself doesn't tell the full story. Even if an individual technically has a high ratio, within the crown you can start to see some thinning that can make the tree look a little less full. And this can have different looks depending on the species. Uh, in spruce, for example, once they reach an older age, uh, you start to see more of a a regular loss of volume throughout the entire live crown, as you can see in this individual here. Uh, whereas with hardwood, it can make the tree start to look a little more clumpy as large branches start to die back and you're only left with some sparse live branches here and there. So you are going to want to pay attention to that subjective qualitative fullness of the crown. And again, we're grading on a curve, so you are going to have to pay attention to how other crowns of the same species look and kind of compare and contrast. Is this up to standard or isn't it? And this, by the way, is more pertinent to older, more mature stems. So finally, in assessing the crown, we're going to want to look at the leader growth. Now we have two types of leaders. We have the terminal leader, which is essentially the end of the main stem. And then we have the lateral leaders, which are the end of each individual branch. Now this one is going to be a bit softwood centric because softwoods have what we call apical dominance. They have a high degree of regularity in their form. And so it's easy to see uh, which part of the stem is the main stem and which part of the tree is just the branches. With hardwoods, obviously, that can be a bit more difficult. Uh, they do tend to have more of a regular form when they're younger, so if you're assessing younger individuals, this still works, but as soon as the tree gets above eh, 20 feet in height, it's kind of, kind of difficult to do this. So how this essentially works is every growing season, you get a new growth of terminal leader and lateral leader. So for example, this past growing season, this was all new growth. This is all height growth from this year, and uh, at the end of every season, a new bud is set, which creates a whirl of branches. So that means that we can easily see the sections of growth. Last growing season, we got all this height growth and so forth. And you can see the same thing reflected in the branches. So in a small tree like this, we can easily see the trends. Uh, the past few years, it's been growing pretty moderately, which is what we could expect of a tree of this size. But this past year, we got about a foot and a half of growth, which means we got a lot of additional foliage from just this year. So next season, it's gonna start out the growing season with even more foliage. So we can expect as much or even more growth next year. So this tree is on a very good trajectory. It's still a young tree, but I would classify this as a vigorous tree. Now, obviously, as the trees get older and the crowns pull away from us, it's not as easy to do this type of analysis because we can't see the individual leaders. But what we can see is the pattern that the leaders are leaving, the vibe of the leaders, so to speak. Uh, and what that means is that when leaders are growing well, when they're nice and long, you're going to have a sort of spiky look to the crown. The more leaders grow, the more they stick out. And on some species, this can even give the tree kind of a medieval mace look, especially on spruce. Now the converse of this is if a tree is not growing vigorously and you're not getting a lot of leader growth year to year, what can actually happen is you develop kind of a tufted look. The top of the tree will start to look like a pom-pom. And this is especially true on certain species like black spruce. So uh, this effect is most noticeable on the species where the foliage looks a little stiffer, for lack of a better term, uh, like your pines and your spruces. But then on species like cedar or hemlock where the foliage is a bit softer, it's harder to make out this pattern, but it's still there. The key is you have to be comparing individuals of the same species. And once you have enough observations, well, then you can kind of distinguish what a vigorous tree looks like versus a non-vigorous tree. So when we're looking at how vigorous a tree is and how well it's growing, the crown is definitely going to be the main characteristic that we want to look at because the crown is, um, for the most part, the alive part of the tree. It's the part that's actually growing. And so it's going to give us the most information about how the tree is growing. But you can also look at the bark. And this method is definitely more imperfect, but um, it can sometimes be a very good method. So what you have to understand about bark is that generally speaking, bark has two different phases. It has more of a juvenile phase and then a mature phase. And uh, obviously this is going to differ uh, across species, but almost always the juvenile bark is soft and smooth. And as the tree gets older, that bark starts to become a little more furrowed, a little rougher looking, and so on. And then there are a handful of species that almost have a third phase to the bark. Uh, for example, yellow birch. After a certain age, it almost starts to look like maple bark. And uh, even white pine sometimes, when it gets really old, the bark will look strikingly similar to ponderosa pine. Now, in general, this isn't going to give us any useful information about the vigor of the tree because it's totally normal. Just because bark looks old and furrowed 
doesn't mean that the tree is growing slowly or abnormally. It's to be expected. But it will give us information if the physical attributes of the bark don't match up with the size of the tree. Because again, essentially what we're trying to do is figure out the past performance of the tree because the past performance is going to be indicative of the future results. And so if a tree is very small and the bark looks old, then that probably means that it took the tree a long time to get to an abnormally small size. So the performance has been poor. And we can also see the opposite effect with extremely vigorous trees. With white pine, for example, the bark starts to look a little bit older, we'll say around eight inches in diameter. But if we see a 10 inch diameter tree that still has that juvenile bark, that probably tells us that this tree is growing fairly quickly and it's a fairly vigorous tree. So you can think of this as a sort of bell curve. The vast majority of trees are going to have average rates of growth and they're going to have uh, physical attributes on their bark that is commensurate with that average growth rate. But on the tails of that bell curve, you're gonna have abnormally fast growing trees and abnormally slow growing trees. And this is what the bark can help us see. So just as an example here, this is probably a 12 inch diameter white pine. And uh, we wouldn't expect to see juvenile bark on this. We would expect to see some furrowed bark. But if you actually look, we're starting to get kind of that ponderosa pine pattern that I was talking about earlier. Uh, this bark looks very old for the size of this tree. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an increment borer to uh, bore into the tree and actually get a sample of the ring so we can count the rings and see the width of the rings and see exactly how vigorously this tree is growing. My suspicion here is that it's actually been growing fairly poorly. So I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it. It looks like it's coming in all right. Uh, but we're, we're essentially seeing what I suspected, which is fairly tight rings going back to the beginning of the tree's life. And uh, for perspective, white pine is usually a fairly fast growing tree. And you know, this tree isn't in open sunlight, but it's also not in, ex in an exceptionally dense environment. The crown has plenty of room to grow. And uh, the life crown ratio that we were talking about earlier is pretty ideal actually. Um, so the real limiting factor here is I think the ground, the ground is pretty wet. And so that has had an effect on the tree's vigor. And we did have a harvest about 10 years ago, which did increase the growth rate slightly. It looks like it's only had an effect for the last five years or so, um, but it's still growing fairly poorly. And that kind of goes back to what I was talking about, about trees being inertial organisms. So it was growing very slowly in the past. And so that past growth, even post harvest, um, post thinning, was uh, a good indication of how it would perform in the future. And of course, these increment borers are pretty neat. Um, I would recommend having one if you are serious about forest management because they can really help you learn a lot as you make observations about the outside of the tree and compare them to what you see inside. Uh, but they're a bit impractical. They take a long time uh, to use and they, they do harm the tree to a degree. But what's important is that I didn't actually need to use that increment board to know that it's been growing slowly. All I had to see was the bark. And we see this very old looking bark and a small diameter, which indicates that the tree is growing slowly. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. This is very much a skill and it's an art form. And the only way you're going to be able to train it is by observation, and iteration, and that requires you to go out in the field and start making those observations. So I highly encourage you to just go out in the woods and start looking at these things. Um, you know, the week I'm posting this, it will be Thanksgiving. And so maybe while the turkey's in the oven, you can just go for a walk in your woods and look at the crowns and what percent of the total stem is covered by live foliage, what the qualitative attributes of those crowns are. Uh, does it look healthy? Does it look unhealthy? Try to compare the different species and individuals within the species and just look at all these things, you know, and in a lot of states, you know, hunting season is, well, the ruts uh, probably in full swing here. So if you're just in a tree stand, just look around. Don't kid yourself. That 10 point buck you got in your game cam at two in the morning is not going to walk by. So you might as well use your time productively and just look at the woods around you.
And don't forget guys, if you're serious about managing your land, Silvicultural has the tools that you need. We have a mapping application that allows you to map your land and export uh, GPS capable geotiff so you can export the maps onto your phone and use them offline out in the field. We also have a growth estimation tool that pulls data from the National FIA database so you can better estimate what the standing volume is on your land given the age and species composition. And we have a financial analysis tool as well as courses and a community which the community you can join for free. And in development right now, we have a harvest planning tool, which will allow you to calculate how much of your land you can thin and regenerate sustainably given your own goals. Uh, so right now, we are offering lifetime memberships. So you can grab a lifetime membership and have access to all current tools and future developments uh, for no further charge. Uh, so I would highly recommend you go and grandfather yourself right now. And as always, if you're just dipping your toes into the tree-laden water and you're just kind of learning the ropes, I do have my book, How to Read Your Forest, available for free. You can get that in the link in the description and comments below. So go ahead and do that. All right, guys, that's all for now. Have a great Thanksgiving. I'll see you later.